What's up, what's up, what's up, guys? How's everybody doing? Yep. Back in my spot again. Seems like my phone is being a bigot. I was making a video. And it was a good video. I don't even know what the heck I was talking about on there. But it's whatever. It is Wednesday. Another day of recovery, guys. I'm going to try and make a vlog of my recovery throughout this whole process of the flu. That is my goal. Hopefully, I can keep it up. Hope everybody's having a wonderful Wednesday. Uh, today, we were supposed to have a vlog thing done. They didn't come in because I told them not to come in due to the flu. And they agreed. Whereas the wife, she's sleeping. There's a lot of commotion going on in the hallway. It's been going like crazy since this morning. I just took my medication. I just ate. Um... I'm running out of ideas what to eat. I'm saying that again, guys. I'm running out of ideas what to eat. Uh, I just ate five pieces of chicken. It's really good. Very good. Um, I took out a fish. Yes, I'm going to try and actually fry me some fish tonight. And try and enjoy that. Just one. Or I might just end up baking it inside the oven and simmering it. I'm not sure yet, guys. That's what I said. I'm trying to figure out what to eat because the food's getting crazy. <laughs> Easy poo. And stuff like that. Um, Bernice still has not came next to me whatsoever. She's afraid of me. Uh, as you can see, my... Right eye is still not together. No, it's not. I don't know what's going on. I might have to see an eye doctor once this whole thing is done. So I might have to go up the block. There's an eye doctor not too far from here. It's not even that far. It's right next to the bus station. I'm going to have to hit them up. And schedule an appointment so they can see my eye. So that uh, I can see if there's anything wrong with my eyesight. Because if there is something wrong with my eyesight, we got a problem. Because then I won't be able to drive. Yeah, guys. I got to be able to drive. Because if I don't get this eye looked at, I don't think I'll be able to drive. Because I won't be able to see to my full potential while driving car. See, now I got another problem on top of another problem. It sucks. It OD sucks. But I'm going to take one step at a time. First things first, take care of this goddamn freaking flu. This flu is horrible. This pill tastes ugh, it's horrible. I'm still tasting the pill. Ugh. I don't like the way the pill tastes. So, yeah. Wife went out, got some more cranberry juice for me. Love you, baby. Um, She got two bottles this for us instead of one. So, I'm drinking more cranberry juice. That's better than the tea and the water because it was drying out my throat. The water was... Drying up throat. I couldn't spit. Nothing. Couldn't swallow. Then on top of that, the tea dried it out. Gooped up the freaking mucus. So every time when I coughed, I coughed it up, but it didn't want to come out of my mouth. It was horrible. Um, I brushed my teeth. It's like I wanted to just 
throw up, throw up when I brush my teeth. It's a pain in the butt, guys. I don't, I don't like this. Like, I never had the flu. I have never had the flu. This is the first time I've had the flu. And it's a pain in the ass, yo. Um, have I been taking my breathing treatment? I ain't gonna lie to you guys. No, I have not been taking any of my B-roll whatsoever. Um, I really don't think I need the B-roll because it's not attacking the asthma. And the coughing situation that I'm doing is not asthmatic. It's fluomatic. You get what I'm saying? I just feel if I take the breathing treatment, will that actually boost up the flu capability in my body and channel out the flu uh, antibiotics. That's the reason why I have not taken the abutable yet. Once I'm done with all of that and it doesn't actually tend to actually work, I'll take the breathing treatment after that. I just don't want it to channel out the flu medication. You know what I'm saying, guys? Because I don't know if it's going to channel out the flu medication. So, I am not going to take the breathing treatment. I'm just going to hold off on it. Because I know for a fact I can take the breathing treatment with the protozone. But I don't know anything about the flu medication with the breathing treatment. You get what I'm saying, guys? But it's crazy. But my recovery is coming along, as you can see, guys. I'm up. I do look a little better. I sound a little better. Um, I do have mucus in me, but it's not coming up. Well, it's coming up, but not, don't want to spit out, should I say. Um, it's a pain in the butt. Every so often, my voice changes because then it dries out my throat. So that's when I actually take the drink. But the recovery is coming along a lot better than what I was before. I'm able to actually sit up now. I'm able to actually lay down without coughing as much as I was before. Um, the cough drops, I don't even need that anymore. Uh, I'm able to walk around, eat, keep my food down. I'm very happy with the situation that's going on. I I'm blessed, actually. Um, on top of this... I want to say, being sick has opened up a lot of me, okay? I started praying more, okay, since I've been sick. I have been praying. Don't get me wrong, guys. I pray every day. Every day I pray. And... But the prayers that I was doing wasn't the one that I really needed to be doing. And I realized that. I was praying for something else. Okay. And it was not a good prayer. Okay, guys. I'm just going to let you guys know. So today... I got up and said, what is wrong with you? And you know what actually got me up doing that was last night. Last night when I did the video, it opened up my eyes to what I was doing wrong. You pray for something that you don't even need to pray for. And y'all want to know what that was, right? You're probably saying, what were you praying for? What I was praying for, guys, was money. <laughs> yes, guys. I ain't gonna lie. I don't like being broke. No one likes being broke. And it's the truth. It sucks. It sucks balls. You know, 
I wanted money, income, so I could support my wife. So I can actually give back to the people who gave back to me. To help us. That's what I was going for. But I'm going at it all wrong. All, all, all wrong. So. I came to the conclusion. Stop. That's exactly what I said. Stop. Why are you praying for something? Because when you get it, what are you going to do with it? Is it going to still be there? Or are you going to do what you said you're going to do? You know, you're asking for something and you're going to get it. But the part is, are you going to do exactly what you said you want to do? You get what I'm saying, guys? Bernice, what are you doing? Nancy Poe. But I'm still learning. I'm 38 years old. Learning the value of life. Learning the value of responsibility. Everything. I wonder how many of you guys are still learning. I wonder how many of you actually think you already know it. But you don't know you know don't know it. I'm not perfect. Nope. I'm still learning. Everything comes with a purpose. But the part is, you don't know what the purpose is. I still don't know what my purpose is. Because I'm still learning. I just wanted to actually get that in there because I'm still learning. I'm blessed. Blessed with a wonderful wife. Wonderful family, even though my life wasn't perfect with my family. But I still love them. You know, I hit everybody up today in my family and told them how I was doing. And they said, we hope you get better. They said they love me, they miss me, and hope to see me soon. But what is soon? You don't know. You don't know what they're going through. They're not hitting me up and telling me about their life situation. That doesn't mean that just because they're not telling you about their situation don't mean you shouldn't be telling them about yours. Don't hold a grudge. Let that grudge go. Live it. I'm living mine. Got a roof over our head. Before this, I was sleeping in the car, trying to get to my woman, left home, yes I did, I left home to be with my friends, got with my woman, became homeless with my wife, we were bouncing around. Then went to go live with her grandmother. That didn't work out. 
came down here to Pennsylvania, not Scranton, Pennsylvania, went to my aunt's house trying to find a place to live. That did not work out. Found a place to live. That situation did not work out. Then got into housing. That situation did not work out. Lost the car. Lost this. So it was a lot, guys. I've been through hell. A lot. Got no job. No one wants to hire me because of my head condition. <laughs> but one thing I can say, I got a roof over my head. I got an amazing wife who loves me. What more can I ask for? I got you guys for my support. What more can I ask for? I'm blessed. May not have money. May not have a car. May not have, you know, much. But I have all of you who are here supporting. And guess what? I'd like to say thank you so much for that. I'd like to say thank you, wifey, as well, for being a loving and supporting wife. I would have never actually thought I would have met somebody that could be this much supportive of me. Because I didn't even know what I was. Nope. I didn't even know what I was. I was bouncing between sexuality. So I was confused. Trying to make my aunt happy. But I wasn't happy. Nope. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy until I found my wife. She made me happy. She listened to me. We talked. But the story on how we actually met. I'm going to leave that for another story because if you haven't heard the story about how me and her met, it's a crazy story. Very crazy story. And I'm happy I found her. Yeah, I found her. It was very, very interesting. It's like the Lord guided me to her because we was going through the same situation. She was afraid that nobody actually wanted to be with her because of the way she looked. Yep, the facial hair, looking like a guy, and this and this and that. I didn't see that. I saw her. I saw a beautiful woman in front of me. A loving, beautiful woman. Everybody always like, oh, excuse me, sir. That's when I say excuse you. Oh my goodness, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. When they always say sir to her, I turn and I look at them and say, take it down. I almost fought a couple of people because they called her a sir. Does she like that? No, she don't. It's not a joke when somebody actually makes fun of how somebody looks. It's kind of messed up. It's very messed up. I don't like that one bit. Everybody's jeans is not all that great. Everybody's color, race, whatsoever, don't even matter. We all bleach the same. 
We all need everybody's stuff. We all need somebody's heart. We always need somebody's kidneys. We need this, we need that. And what are we doing? You're taking everybody else's stuff and putting it into somebody else so that we all can survive, so we all can actually live. <laughs> Where would we be if we didn't have everything? Everybody does everything. Everybody bleeds the same. Everybody hurts the same. Everybody does everything the same. <laughs> Guess people have forgotten about that. Without all of us, how the heck will you actually be able to survive? How will we all survive? Greed is the most baddest thing in the world. And that's exactly what's going on here. It's greed. Forgot about so much. A lot of people forgot about stuff. It's like they don't care anymore. They're learning that greed gets the best of them. Everything is the best of them. Why is that? Why? What does this world come to? But other than that, I'm going to end it here because it's starting to get dizzy, as you can see, and too much of this sometimes works the brain. But I hope you guys actually take this into consideration. Think about stuff, guys. Open up your mind. Stop the hatred. Move on. It's the only thing you can do to make the Lord happy with you for when you pass on. But other than that, guys, I'll see you all later. Peace out.